Hey y'all, welcome to Pink Shade. It's Tuesday. So that means we're gonna talk about 90 Day Fiance, the original, the OG, the 90 Day Fiance. And guys, guess what? Same for couples. We need some new blood. We need some new people. I'm tired of three of the four asses being fake on this show. Kimberly. Where is a <laughs> closet mom? Where is the guy that is from Australia, maybe also Korea? I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> We're seeing him next week, finally, and he calls his girlfriend Piggy for some reason. Oh, don't know why. Let, yeah, let me tell you what. Nobody better call me Piggy. That's not going to fly. <laughs> it's not going to fly. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, we got the same four couples this week, and you and I were going back and forth about, like, who's going to take who? Because we're like, well, surely we'll just get, like, the two of the old and two news. No, we yeah. got four couples we have not seen yet. Wait, or is it three? No, it's three couples we haven't seen yet. But it looks like next week we are going to get Nick, age 30, who my notes say is from Australia. But obviously he's Korean because they he talks about his Korean parents. Yeah, so his whole, accent is very different. It's like, a little... It's, it's a little, little Australian. Both. It's a little of both, yeah. Yeah. So maybe his whole family has moved to Australia from Korea, and that's yep. an interesting combo. And then Devin mm -hmm. from Arkansas, we are getting them next week. But I do believe it is Anali and Clayton who have the mom in the closet. Okay. I think Anali's from Peru and Clayton's and from has Kentucky. The picks. Yeah. Because I think that Citra is the one from Indonesia and Sam is from Missouri, and he's the one with just the big brand of neck tattoo. <laughs> but I think it's an Ollie and Clayton. Wait, with the why are they saving these people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to hear any more about any Nikki more asses. I think Nikki, they think Nikki is enough to carry the first half of the season and then they'll bring in guinea pig closet mom. And, then, <laughs> and I'm like, Nikki's great. I love Nikki, but let's, we need, I need guinea pig. And I need to know why the mom is in the closet and what's I do too. Set up in there. Is there like a I dresser? Too. Is it just like a, does she, does she have a mattress at least? Um, yeah. I think it's a walk-in and I think she's just got a mattress on the floor and they're in a little dresser because he's like, I didn't have a room for you, yes. but I have a walk-in closet you can sleep in. Yeah. And I need to know like how she feels about the guinea pigs and and that, that's and, not my concern. And he dresses my, my, them up and like one of them, he makes French. He puts a beret on it. Oh, <laughs> and, oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> you need. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And so that I need to know how the girlfriend feels about the guinea pigs and feels about the mom in the closet. How is this yeah. all going to work? Yeah. That's the show I want to see. I, I know. We need to understand about the mom in the closet. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, is it like just like a New York City studio? Is it like right. big enough? Is it is it big enough where it could be considered an apartment? Can she cut like a, a doggy door hole through the door so when the door <laughs> is closed, she can get some sunlight in there? It didn't seem natural. It's in a dark room. <laughs> She's like all so pale. Many questions. Like, shit like flowers in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That was about incest. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay. So I want to ask you a question about some things I've seen on the social media, but because I was out of town in Mississippi and when I go, I'm just like, go, 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 go. I'm seeing friends the whole time, family, the whole thing. And I don't have time to even dip in. Like so many people sent me nice, like things for my birthday, like messages. And I just having to like heart them instead of saying like, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm there, I literally, I don't get any lay on my bedtime, look at my TikTok, nothing. Yeah. So I know that you probably know the scoop on this. So I'm going to ask you about what happened with Obsessed Vest. So Obsessed Vest is like a crime con. It's like a Bravo con, but it's for all the podcasts that are on the TrueCom Obsessed Network. Yes. So how many podcasts are on that network? Just a handful, but they also have other podcasters there. Um, it's just okay. basically for their friends and mm -hmm. people they that, that Patrick likes. Okay. And oh, so I said, they, I said I wasn't going to say his name. Well, we can bleep it. No, it's okay. <laughs> we, I don't want any litigious people coming my way. <laughs> so um, just, I just really have like general overall questions. So I'm yeah. trying to figure out what this weekend is. So it's like a, it's like a podcast movement. It's like a three day thing and you go and you watch panels or you go to cocktail parties or are there like live podcasts? Yes. Like crime it's all of that. Of? It's all of that. Um, and they do some fun things too. Um, a drag brunch and mm -hmm. uh, a Taylor Swift sing along. And like okay. they do some fun stuff and it, they do panels and live 
shows and Q and A's and all of that. Yeah. And it's like three days and you could go as a fan or you can go as a podcaster if you're on a panel or something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't go, obviously, because we're No, talking. we've never been invited. Never been invited. Okay. Big mistake. This is only Huge. your second year. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my understanding from the social media is it's not going well, bitch. <laughs> to Renda Medley, um, that because there has been some strife within that network where the main players uh, had a business breakup, but they're still on the same network, right? Is that that's the no, case? No, they're no longer on the same network, but they were contractually obligated to appear. Okay, so but there are Ella- other podcasters who are still on the network. Okay, that might not want to be. I don't know. Okay, so Ellen is the the girl that broke off, and has, she's doing her own thing now, and she's not on the network anymore. But she was contractually obligated to be there, so she so she went and to do the panels also, and like, whatever. She will do anything for the, her fans, and so she wanted to meet people that had bought tickets to see her. And yeah, she didn't want people to be her. out of out of no, money or what. No, yeah. she wants to meet everybody. She's very nice. So initially, what happened, and this is completely my high level understanding, is that. Uh, they had a spin. She had a spinoff podcast. She had been the host of True Crime Obsessed, so she continued to be the host of True Crime Obsessed, and then also had a spinoff podcast with another person. And no, then that podcast got all wrong. But that's okay. oh, and then okay. Please tell me then. <laughs> Patrick had True Crime Obsessed. He did a spinoff show with Ellen, his best friend of like twenty years. So all- Patrick was the only host of True Crime Obsessed. There wasn't a co-host. no with with Jillian. And, okay. Okay. Um, gotcha. He did okay. a spinoff uh, with his best friend Ellen of twenty years, and okay. he eventually left that went, and w- went back to only True Crime Obsessed. She okay. continued the spinoff with another friend. Okay. And it was very popular, and people loved it. Yes. And then there, therein, the fighting began, and then they split. She split from True Crime Obsessed, or was asked to, or whatever is the case. Uh, but they split. Yes. They had a business breakup. Okay. So yes. she's continuing on with the uh, podcast, business, just not on yeah, that. Personal breakup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so she, um, then she took that podcast to a different network and then they were no longer friends and it was all very sad for all involved. Sounds like. That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. So now they have this three day thing that had already been planned for a long time and people had bought expensive tickets to go. Yes. And they're going to get to do all this fun stuff with their favorite podcasters and get to do drag brunch and sing-alongs and go to panels and book signings and whatnot and have a yes. three-day love fest with their favorite podcasters. Exactly. But it turned into Firefest. Is that what yeah, happened? For, yeah, for some people there it did. I'm yes, sure there okay. are some people who still had a good time. Um, okay. I'm really sad for the people that spent a lot of money and traveled and were really looking forward to good vibes only. And it was not that yeah so and where sorry. was this yeah where I was really this being that. held dallas dallas okay is that where these is that where they're based or that's just where they were having no they connection? they pick a place each time okay so i guess if you really want to know the scoop on all this stuff you have to go over to the reddit yeah yeah but i think probably at this point there's so much scoop that it's probably hard to even follow you know what I, I mean? think there are some um, posts that do like cliff notes versions, but yeah. there's still constantly stuff coming out. So, um, so we're recording this on Monday, so it's over now because it was over the weekend. Is that true? Yes. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Well, it'll be interesting to see all the players taken to the mic, as it will, and telling their versions. Right? That'll happen, the, I guess. That'll be interesting because we were the only, or one of the only podcast to say something about this article that came out um okay. a week ago and i know uh-huh. a lot of them couldn't because they were going mm-hmm. to this and so it will be interesting i'm sure some people didn't feel comfortable saying something and i'm that's totally their right to not of say something mm-hmm. um and i was really nervous to say something too um mm-hmm. because it's a very big network and yeah right so it's scary um yeah. but yeah I, it'll be interesting to see how things unfold. I just wish the best for um, everybody. I wish it wasn't like this. I think our community started off really supportive. At least when we started our podcast six and a half years ago, it was so supportive. Like podcasts lifting each other up. And yeah. uh, some people are not really like that anymore. And so it's, 
Yeah, hmm. it's sad. I hope we can get back to that for the listeners and for the the true crime victims who it's really all about. Were a lot of these podcasters at CrimeCon with you? No, no. Um, some people have decided they don't like CrimeCon for very, very valid reasons. CrimeCon mm-hmm. has its own set of problems. Yeah. Um, so nothing like this has ever happened at CrimeCon to my knowledge. But yeah. Um, the so some people have decided to just do this this festival instead of CrimeCon. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're like, well, CrimeCon is problematic because maybe they're making money off of cr- true crime podcasts, but also Obsessed Fest could be problematic because people are doing drag brunches and Taylor Swift sing-alongs regarding true crime podcasts. Do yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, the whole thing about true crime changing of people thinking that it should be more respectful, it should be more respectful. People... Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. And maybe we're part of the problem. I don't know. Um, well, I'm just saying you can't say there's a problem with CrimeCon and then there's not a problem with Obsessed right. Fest when they're both literally doing the same thing. They're they're selling tickets and making money for you to go in and gather CrimeCon information, a bit, see a panel. Yeah, CrimeCon is a bit more victim focused in that there uh-huh. are booths with people's families who are trying to find missing yeah. people and yeah. a lot of panels with like survivors or their families that are mm-hmm. talking about things and like tips on safety and things like that. So it is it does have those elements that are really tacky, but it also has a lot of good stuff that comes out of it. Yeah. Yeah. The entire like- CrimeCon thing is owned by a company that the owner is very problematic. And so that sucks. Uh And the location they hold it in is sometimes very problematic. Gotcha. And that Mm -hmm. also sucks. And sort of for us, it's been like a necessary evil. It's something we Mm -hmm. have to do to um, meet our listeners. But also the actual people that we work with at CrimeCon are so so nice to us yeah and right delightful and um i think they p- put on a good event yeah yeah i mean it seems like you guys are always i mean covid banned covid be damned you still yeah, yeah you still, <laughs> i yeah. still enjoyed it even though i got covid yeah. yeah oh god please i've got i got my covid and my flu shot so i'm hoping that it won't come for me at bravo con that's what good i'm for hoping you. Yeah, good for me. Um, well, I'm interested in that. So I guess maybe I can go and I would like to see the article that you posted. I know you put it on the Twitter. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to read that article and get some background and then maybe I'll take to Reddit. If you could point me to like a, a Cliff Notes thread, I'd love to see that too. Sure. I did like how you uh, tried to get people to follow me on Instagram for my birthday, which I appreciated. And you told everybody to get off Reddit for five minutes and to follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Which I like. I was on Reddit refreshing every twenty minutes. I had well, that's what that's that's minutes. where I was a that's where I was a clue. I was like, oh, something's happening on Reddit that I'm not <laughs> a party to because I'm stuck in Mississippi and I can't, I can't. I don't have five minutes to myself. Okay, all right. Hmm. Well, guys, that's pretty interesting. And, yeah, um, it was kind of like, yeah, it's just a, so much drama. Yeah. Hmm. It sounds a lot like the fire festival thing where you're kind of following it minute by minute, like yeah, for updates. Yeah, and at least the fire festival people, people could get a tan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know a lot of the people there and involved, and you know the players and all that. Yeah. Yes. So I was hearing from them and on Reddit, and yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I'm glad that I got caught up with that just like a little bit because I have been interested as to what exactly is happening. I do love a good drama. I love a good piece of gossip. Speaking of that, I've reached out to Normal Gossip. I'm dying to have her on the podcast, um, but I haven't heard back. Normal Gossip. I, you've got to be listening to Normal Gossip. It is so good, Kimberly. Oh, I'm going to subscribe right now. Somebody writes in a gossip story, and then the host tells you the gossip story with a um, with a co-host. Okay, and there's that different co-hosts. Really every week. fun. So it's because just like that's I'm, the thing about like drama. Like this drama has been like hurting people, and that makes yeah. it a little less fun. But yeah, a lot less fun. But if this is like fun drama that doesn't really hurt anybody, yeah, then I it's, can it's, totally get into that. 
it's like neighbor drama yeah. or um, you know something happening at somebody's wedding drama. But it's all the na- you know all the names are changed. And the location, they don't ever say exactly the location or anything, so it'd be hard to figure it out. That sounds but, amazing. But she tells the story, and then the, then she'll stop kind of in the middle and say to the co-host, like, okay, so what do you think is going to happen? Like, where where are you with me now? You know? Yeah, and yeah. The and the, yeah, the co-host will be like, oh, well, if I was so-and-so, I would be mad about this. And like, okay, we're going to keep going. You know, it's oh, really- I'm so excited. It's really good. I would recommend going back. So normal gossip, guys. I am trying to get them on here. They do live shows sometimes. And I do believe that the host of it is uh, from the D.C. area. So, I mean, I could even go go yeah. to her. Yeah. I'm really into it. Okay. So that's a little pitch for a podcast I have nothing to do with. So um, See, this is what I'm talking about, podcasts supporting other podcasts. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Of course. Of course. I'm looking for a good long, long-term podcast right now because I finished the the Dateline one, um, the murder in the apartment, whatever. Mm-hmm. I um, I finished that one, so now I'm you ready for a new one. You should go back and listen to our episode on that case. All right. Do you have any idea even what year it was in or how I could it's find it? It's called Death of the Homecoming Queen, I believe, or All What right. Happened to the Homecoming Queen. I'll just search Homecoming Queen. I don't think we knew that in, in Keith's version. I don't think we got that she was a homecoming queen. I'm sorry. It's called What Happened to the Beauty Queen. And it Beauty was Queen. from January 12th, 2022. Wow. That's your um, that's your color notes working for you right there. <laughs> no, I went on my <laughs> podcast app. Just a little search. <laughs> Just a little search. Okay. So let's... Um, Let's get into it. 90 Day Fiance, Season 10, Episode 3, To Witness the Beginning. So, yep, we are doing Dearly Beloved. We are gathered here today to witness the beginning. Now, I don't know if I've ever heard that, but maybe that's the long version like of the, the vows. the version or something. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if when we get to it, it'll be like, and this woman shall obey this man. I yeah, they better not do that for Jasmine's <laughs> episode. Oh, Lord, she likes it. She likes it. Mm-mm. All right. Well, we're going to start with- She does uh, like it. Yeah, she does like that dynamic. Yeah. We're going to start with your couple, and that okay. is uh, Justin Igor and Nikki Exotica. And I don't know if you have had a chance to listen. Probably not because it came out today. My episode with Keisha about Love After Lockup. We're just talking, 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 and we're talking about uh, fake asses because a girl on Love After Lockup, she's like, I want to, I want to get a BBL. And then later we see her like in some tight bike shorts and we're like, why does she need a BBL? Like her, Mm -hmm. look at her butt. Like it's good. I was like, maybe she just wants a different shape. And then Keisha said that all the girls on Teen Mom like to have butts that look like they're wearing diapers. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, I don't know. I don't know about the Teen Mom, but I can tell you about three big asses that we're currently have on 90 Day. And then Keisha goes into, she goes, wait, wait, wait. I got to talk about this one girl that's on there. She's describing her. She's describing Nikki. Uh, And I go, "Uh uh uh-huh. I let her do all the description. And I said, well, here's the story. And I gave her the whole story about Nikki, you know, being a trans woman. And we think that maybe when they dated, she was 30 and he was 19. We can't quite figure out the timeline. (laughs) Um, but they were apart. I gave her the whole story and she was like, she's like, the trans has nothing to do with why people are staring at her. And I go, well, that's yes. what I'm saying. Yes. It's the yes. fact that her eyes look like a cat that are yeah. piercing into your soul and that she's dressed like an in living color dancer from the nineties. Yep. And yep. there's a camera crew following her. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, I said the thing about changing the eye color. And I was like, I've never heard of this. It's so crazy. She's she's a plastic surgery expert because of this, that, and the other. And I said that about the changing eye color. And Keisha goes, oh, yeah. You know, um, a member of Escape, um, who's Candy Burris's, you know, girl band from back in the day, um, she did that. She and her daughter both did that, had their eye color changed. She was like, I've heard of that. I was like, I've Is never heard of it. Is it injection? I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know either. Okay. All right. Justin and Nikki. Let's go. Let's hear about them. So uh, I can't tell which one is Nikki and which one's Nicole. She says like, Nikki's the one that's very flamboyant. And I'm like, do you see yourself as Nicole? What is happening? I don't. Yeah, I don't. They both look like animes. 
So I don't know. There, it's the same person, but we're, she's we're packing, just going to say Nikki. Yeah. Nikki <laughs> is packing to go to Moldova, and she's packing her hormone syringes because if she doesn't, Justin might wind up in a body bag. Maybe she gets really cranky if she's off her hormones. That would be our our finally our crossover dateline. <laughs> it um, wouldn't be the couple we thought, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did note her butt because it is her her proportions are very much like a Barbie doll, and yeah. Um, they, I think, scientifically showed that Barbie would not be able to stand up if those proportions were real. So I don't know how she stands up, but good for her. Um, yeah. So she is going on this overseas international flight to Moldova dressed head to toe in leather. I looked Skin it up. Tight leather. I looked it up. LA to Chisnoa, wherever it is, Moldova, is in fact like 22 hours. With the the layovers. swamp ass, swamp crotch that I Ugh. would have by hour before with taxiing the runway still. <laughs> yeah, Just it's not. Just going br- through TSA is Sweating. enough. And Sweating. I, I don't, and I, she's wearing a backwards baseball hat, like a, that says um, NYC in huge, heavy gold letters like metal letters yeah um she looks like a rap video brats doll and yep. yeah, it, yeah i just if she i if she's happy with the way she looks that's amazing it doesn't look comfortable to me that would be my choice to not well it's like people if you're who hang out in the house at G, in jeans like why are you just hanging watching tv on the couch in jeans that doesn't make sense to me you know, I have that problem sometimes because like when I was in Mississippi, we were, you know, I was do- going and doing and having to put on like jeans and like something kind of cute every day, you know, because not just like the sweatpants like I wear around here. And when I would come home, I'd be like, Ugh. like people are coming over in a couple of hours, but I really want to put on my sweatpants. But like, yeah. is it worth it? Because I have to go and change. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not lounging around in jeans either. No, I can't have like mm-hmm. anything cutting off circulation or like. Get, I don't want to sit on the plane. Leaving indents. I don't want anything with a zipper or a button. No, no. indents. Yeah. It's got to so be a she, pull on elastic waist. Yeah. yeah. So maybe she just put on those like leather pants the day before and just can't get them off. Like Ross, <laughs> like Ross on Friends. And so she's just like, yeah. they are staying with me until I cut them off in Moldova. <laughs> um, so her friend Chantel, Chantel, Chanel, Not something. Sure is mm-hmm. coming to take her to the airport. And um, I do like, I just want to state, I like that she's going to Moldova to work on their issues before he comes over on the visa. Because all of these couples, and it drives me crazy on this show, use the 90 days as like, should we be together? Right. And that's not what it's for. It's for adjusting to America and planning a wedding. Yeah, I think it's like $3,000 we've heard. To do this. So it's not like an inexpensive thing. So you're like, and you're you out $3,000. A limited number of times. So well, it's, she's like, we're going to make sure we are rock solid as a couple before he does the 90 days. Because 90 yeah. days, is, it's not for therapy and like <laughs> right. figuring out if you're meant for each other. It is right. literally for like getting this person adjusted to the country and for planning this wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they are planning, uh, they're making fun of his accent, which I'm not going to do. And um, if he's going to pick her up at the airport, because she might have too much luggage and his car has a subwoofer. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, and then we learn from Chantel Chanel that Nikki gives him an allowance and she pays for their vacations and she pays for his cosmetic procedures, which according to the friend rival Nikki's in that he has done his nose, cheeks, eyes, eyebrows, etc. Now his face does not look like he has done all this stuff. No, to it me. doesn't. Mm-mm. Um it I doesn't. don't maybe he's just pocketing that money. I don't know. He's uh he's 36 and I think he looks 36. He looks 36. And yeah. he's he's attractive. I do think he I can see a difference. Cute. I can see a difference in his nose. Mm-hmm. From the earlier pictures to now, but that's it. Everything else yeah. looks the same. He just looks like a good-looking 36-year-old Moldovan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we learned that in the past, Nikki has had a lot of sugar daddies. And now mm. in full sugar circle, she is now a sugar mama. <laughs> 
and life goes on and um, a song from Love the Lion King. I don't know. Um, and full sugar circle. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> she's nervous to see his family and his friends. They supported their union before, which made me laugh so much that she's saying our union. Um I don't know. It just felt so old fashioned to me. <laughs> Do you support our union? Um, <laughs> but they might not support their union now that they know that she's trans. And um, they keep showing these old photos of them when they were first together as a couple, like 15 years before. She looks so different. She looks yeah. so different. Again, if it was 17 years ago, that puts her at 30 and that puts him at 19. 1,000%. I okay. do, uh, yeah, yeah, 1,000%. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't love that. I don't love it either. Uh, love it either. So, and then she later, like she said, she calls herself mama. She's like, mama's here. And I was like, don't know, especially because of what age it was when you started. Please stop. Mm -mm. So, mm -mm. uh. My aunt was very a lot younger than my uncle, and she called him daddy. And I, it was so gross. That's – I don't like it. I don't, yeah, I don't like, it. like it. So um, meanwhile, Justin is in Moldova, and in his hero shot, he is flexing and showing off the gun show. And that is his <laughs> shot. Um, he also is vacuuming his apartment. And I was like, somebody call Gino and tell him that this is what you're supposed to do. And, and he, Robert. And Robert, um, <laughs> Justin knows to at least flush his toilet and do the bare minimum. So yeah, it looked like it was looked bed. like a nice place. Yeah, it looked yeah. like a nice place. Yeah. He's, I think, very neat. He even polishes his shoes and he puts mm -hmm. a, a sweater around his shoulders, like preppy style. Jaunty. And mm -hmm. he buys this welcome mat that he said he wants her to step on first. And I did mm -hmm. not understand. Like, was it a symbolic? It was a symbolic the situation, threshold? the crossing of the threshold. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get more on that later. So he says he's more open-minded than he was 20 years ago and thinks Nikki is the woman he was looking for. He had a problem with the trans thing. He's trying to not have a problem now. And um, meanwhile, she lands in Moldova. She pulls a Darcy in the bathroom. She uses mm -hmm. mouthwash. She says, now he can suck my tongue. Just kidding. He kisses me like an 80-year-old. Gross. Um, uh, ew, ew. and also that's part of the problem is you're trying to figure out if he's attracted to you or if he has issues with your, you know, gender. I, I, yeah. Or any, I, what is so weird to me is they were together for like two, three years before she told him this. So it's not like he knew or could tell or, and then when he did know, that's when he got all weirded out and like left town. I don't know. The whole thing is strange to me. I think it's just so foreign to him and mm -hmm. it maybe has him questioning like it does. I think a lot of straight guys would like question their sexuality because he loved having sex with her before, but she's uh -huh. a woman. So it shouldn't, it doesn't change your sexuality. She is a woman, you know, right, but right. to him, that's like, Oh, does that make me gay? And like in Moldova, this whole thing is not normal. So yeah. It's, I get why he's confused, but he needs to decide before he breaks her heart. This is like Christian and um, Cleo. Like, he needs yeah. to not be, like, trying this out and playing with her heart as right. he's doing it. Yeah. So point. she puts on her heels. She struts with her luggage, including this giant one that she could fit in. It was like a – it could fit <laughs> several bodies in. And But she has less luggage than Sophie. I mean, she has the, more luggage than Sophie, Who's yeah. actually moving to LA. So right. still surprised at the lack of luggage that Sophie had. They hug and kiss. It's nice. She's like more physically into it. You can tell he's more reserved, but I can't tell if that's because he's uncomfortable with the trans thing or if that's just him and he's in a conservative country and you don't just like start making out at the airport. Yeah. Maybe culturally they just don't make out yeah. at the airport. But at least he showed up to pick her up at the airport. They were worried that he wouldn't. So, um, <laughs> And he says, this is my first kiss in nine months, and it burned my lips because it was so hot. And I was like- She was like, her, what? What? <laughs> Maybe her injections are leaking. I don't know. <laughs> no. um, sorry. Yeah, he was mean. like, it was like fire on my lips. And fire she's like, on my lips. Like, she's like, should we get that checked out? Are yeah. You, okay. Yeah. And then she says, I have a tingling too, but it's between my legs. <laughs> and 
because I want something more. And he goes, food? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. And then um, there's a mall that they drive by that's called Moldova, which I, I actually <laughs> did laugh at. And I don't really like puns, but I laughed at it. Um, and then he, they're in the car and he says, I miss your touches. And she says, mama's home. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and then they go to a place called Creme de la Creme. And she says, I like your creme. And okay. Uh, All right. We get it. We, we get, it. get it, guys. Uh, yeah. And he says, you go first. I will watch your ass. Like, so I'm like, oh, okay. They really do have like, they're talking about sex a lot. Like maybe they do yeah. have good sexual chemistry, but then inside the cafe, when there are people around, he gets really self-conscious and he thinks they're all staring at her because she's trans, which is again, not why they're looking. She is dressed like no one else there. Her yeah. makeup is like no one else in that country right now. Yeah. And, right. and you have a sweater tied around your shoulders. So you look like a <laughs> yacht do and she <laughs> looks like she's in a janet jackson video and so yes. it's like I, they just look very mismatched and that's why people are staring also there's a camera crew with you and you're in a yep. little cafe yep everyone forgets there's an actual camera crew there that's why people are looking yes mm -hmm. so she yeah. says at immigration the guy looked her up and down and asked if she was here for business or pleasure and she thinks he thought she was a sex worker and he's like oh yeah you know a lot of women in Moldova dress up and put on a lot of makeup for special occasions and Nikki is like that all the time yeah. and um she he tells her this is where it gets weird he's like maybe we should go out and do things um during the day and not at night yeah. and because look how people are staring. But it was daytime then, and people uh -huh. are staring. I feel like they would stare less at night because people are more dressed up at night. So people would stare. And it's less well lit. So people might stare less. Maybe he he's seems, like, this is what she wears during the day. What the hell is she going to wear at night? Yeah, maybe <laughs> you know? that's true. So yeah. she's like, why are you being like this? And he says... Very gently, but still incredibly rude. Um, because shut up, she can look how she wants to. And I realize that's ironic coming from me because I've been criticizing her. But she can look however she wants to. And he says, well, it's about your style and your makeup. You look like a porn actress. And she says, well, I guess that's better than trans. And he says, well, like a trans porn actress. Uh, shut up, dude. Just quit he talking. says it so gently and it's so mean. And like he doesn't have, uh, he has Andre's like sharp jabs, but without Andre's angry delivery. Yeah, right. right. You know, like Andre yes. would scream at you, but he's saying the mean things, but in like a nice way. And that doesn't make it better. And then yeah. he says, it's really about your safety. I'm worried about your safety. And, and then she says, I don't know, 17 years ago when we were first together, I didn't have this face and I talked like a truck driver. My voice was so low and I think I went from like here to up way up here. Like she thinks she she thinks she looks way more feminine now, which whatever. I she mean, may, maybe thinks. some aspects do. Maybe some aspects are more feminine from when he knew her before. Um, but when so. She started transitioning. I think she said she came out as wanting to transition at 17, and then her mom didn't talk to her from 17 to 19. So when she met him and she was 30, she had obviously been fully transitioned for a long time. Mm -hmm. So whatever she's done to herself where she feels like she looks more womanly, um, I, I don't necessarily think she – my opinion is she doesn't necessarily look more womanly. She just looks more like a like – a, lady that's been out in the sun too long and done too many plastic surgeries, like pla like melted plastic. Yeah. It's yeah. like um, if you do plastic surgery too early, also it can look – it makes you look way older. Cause and he said that though. He said she done plastic surgeries to make her – and she looked more womanly. Yeah. So he if he thinks it and she thinks it, that's great. Great. That's yeah. not what I think, but that doesn't matter what I think. So – she says, you know what? You're leaving here. You're coming to America. Who cares what people in Moldova think? And she's like, you're not hiding me away in the dark at night like I'm a secret. And then mm -hmm. she thinks, part of me is starting to think he has a secret nighttime girlfriend. 
Like a, a girlfriend he only sees at night like a vampire. <laughs> yeah, but that was weird. Yeah. Like he, he should be on a Nickelodeon show, like My Secret Vampire Girlfriend. And <laughs> like a kid's book, you know? And so I Just don't know. Just for Halloween. <laughs> So I don't, she's, this is not off to a great start. This has all happened before they've even gone and put her luggage away. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. Good luck to you. I really am rooting for Nikki. I really am. And he seems okay too. I think, I just don't know if this issue is too big. Yeah. They both seem okay. I'm going to need to study some of his previous pictures to see all this stuff he's done on his face. I don't, I mean, like, again, only his nose looks different and it's not that different. Yeah. Um, I don't love that she pays for everything. No, I never, I never love that. I never love that. What's his job? Why doesn't he have a job? Does he have a job? Trainer. Uh, Well, everybody's a trainer. But I think that means he wants to be a fitness model. Oh, isn't that usually what it means on this show? Yeah, yeah. All right, so Rishi can get it. (laughs) So hot. Um, let's go to Sophie and Robert. So we open up with her trying to do her makeup in that tiny patio courtyard bathroom. It's she's an like, outhouse. Let's be real. It's an outhouse. She's like, oh my God, I can't even see in here. I'm trying to do my makeup. And then they sit together. They're doing like their little talking head together. And she goes, why, why won't you just admit that having that bathroom outside is inconvenient? And then he goes, I mean, it's fine. It's a bathroom. You're lucky to even have a bathroom. And she goes, I mean, the, the the patio is nice. He goes, great. You look at the patio on the way to the bathroom. We get shots of the patio. The patio is covered in crap. It is like file cabinets, old yeah. cat crates. Like, what? <laughs> there's nothing beautiful about this patio. No, there's like cinder blocks and it's gross. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, he needs to stop being so defensive and just admit that this is not an ideal living situation. Right. He makes it sound yeah. like she's the freaking queen of England for wanting an indoor bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Even Sheila of David and Sheila had an indoor bathroom, and she had no roof, but she had an indoor bathroom. Well, it was a bucket in the corner. So let's not Something. say it was an indoor. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess, you know, it so we could inside. go to, she could go to Home Depot and get a bucket. I mean, yeah. she could. <laughs> Again, I think this thing about the uh, medical chair next to the bed is a good idea with the <laughs> bedpan under it. Yeah. So um, he says uh, he thinks day one was great. Other than, you know, obviously it's his fault because they had an uh, elevator glitch at the airport. Other than that, he thought it went really well. And then they, they kind of laughed together about how last night, you know, she was so jet lagged and so tired, but he was like insisting on having sex. And she was like, oh my God, it took forever for him to like unbutton the pants. And I was like, oh. I don't they, love this either. Like it's, at, it sounds first like time he I heard it, pressuring her to do that. And she was like half asleep. Yeah, the first time I heard it, that's what I thought. But then when I watched it the second time, she was laughing about it. And she was like, oh, my gosh, really? And he was like, come on. Like, she was laughing about it more the second okay. time. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was non-consensual. Okay. Good. So they're, they're laughing, and he's just scrolling on his phone as they talk, which was bugging me. Uh-huh. And, and she goes, you know what? It's annoying in the middle of the night. You have to, have to go take a wee, and you have to put on your shoes in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. And he goes, you're just so used to being bougie and living in places like your parents paying for apartments and stuff. And she goes, "Uh, what is bougie about wanting to have a bathroom inside your apartment? It's not ideal. It's not ideal. And he goes, look, I told you last night, we're not going to talk about this every day. Like, we're not going to talk about it every day. He gets so defensive. And she goes, he's very defensive, defensive. And I hate to slag it off like it's terrible. But it is terrible. And she says, you know, we just have different mindsets about things. Like, I just would like basic running water. And he's like, That's no. all. Yeah. She's not even asking for that much. I know. So he says, you know, I'm not going to be able to discuss this with her every single day. It's going to make me feel inadequate. And then I won't want to talk to her. So it's her fault. And yeah. he's going to punish her. Mm-hmm. He said it makes him feel inadequate. But, I mean, I think that. What we're seeing here is all she wants is him to say, yeah, you know what? As soon as like you could get a job and stuff and we can both contribute, we're definitely going to look for a new place. Right. And that's it. Nothing. He's just like. nothing that like is less. It's like he thinks it's not manly 
like and to struggle with money. But yeah. no no one cares if you're honest about it and like respect the other person's opinion if you are honest and say, Yeah, I can't afford it right now. I wish I could give you more, but I yeah. can't right now. But I understand this isn't great and you're being a trooper about it. So thank yeah. you. You know, that would be so much better than making it's like gaslighting her to think that having an outdoor toilet is not a big deal. Yes. He's totally trying to be like, why are you such a bitch? And she's yeah. like, well, I don't think it's a lot to ask, right? Yeah. So um, they go hang out at Venice Beach. He's Wait, like, I'm oh, sorry. Over- we're not going to talk about her hair because I think that you're wrong on both fronts. I think the hair is wrong and the butt is real. And I think it's you're backwards. Okay. The hair is definitely, okay, I'm going to need Lindsay, Bunky Lindsay to weigh in, but yeah. I definitely think that is not a wig. It's I mean, not a wig because right, because, because her hair was straight the day bad. before and now it's curly. I think that she literally like washed her hair and because I think it's naturally curly, I think she ha- that's why she has it all flattened out with clips Okay, for it to, dr- for it to dry that way. Okay. And is th- are the roots on purpose, the black roots? Yeah. And the- well, they're not on purpose. She just forgot to get them done before she left. That doesn't sound like Sophie. Not the Sophie I know on episode three <laughs> that I know so well. Um, yeah, I, I like Bunky Lindsay to weigh in because there are times when it does look a little wiggy. Mm-hmm. But then at times like this, I mean, if it was a wig, why wouldn't she have the wig on? Because she's right, not, right. you know, it makes no sense. Right. Maybe she puts a wig over that. Or is it just really bad extensions? It could be bad extensions. I don't, we need, we need help. We need help with this because when they go to the beach, it's perfectly straight again. Love after lockup that I was obsessed with, Stan and Lisa. Uh huh. And she had the one inch hair and then twelve inch extensions. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) When she shaved all her head off, she got mad in prison. Yeah. Um. So, all right. So they go to Venice Beach and they're hanging out, and her hair is perfectly straight. So maybe she does have a wig on over her regular hair. I don't know. So she goes, God, it would be so great to but live here the on the beach. Um, when they were walking the dog, I was eyeballing it and I was like, maybe it's maybe it's not fake. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she's just hashtag blessed. So um she's like, it would be so nice to live here on the beach, right? Like that's the California life. He goes, Yeah, I came to California for the beach. Like it's so great. And she was like, Okay, like these condos over here. And she's pointing to condos that have like an ocean view, right? And she goes, <laughs> How much how much would it be to live in those condos? And he goes, uh, let me look. So he like looks on his phone like red fan and goes, Those are twenty five thousand dollars a month. Yeah. She's like, What? Like she just had no grasp, you know? And she goes, I think that we would be happier if we lived near the beach, because like, you know, um, when we were in Mexico together, we were at the beach and you're so happy. And he goes, Hey, if it's up to you, if you want to ask for help for a place, that's great. But otherwise we're in Inglewood. So now we see the first little bit where he's sort of like, Oh, your family's got money. So why don't they pay for us to get a better place? And I didn't see this coming, but this is his angle. I didn't like it. I no. didn't like it. So then but she tells at the it, same time, if she wants a nice place, one of them has to pay for it. And well, he she just wants a it. decent place. She just wants yeah. decent. But if she wants a mansion on the beach. Right. Well, that that's, that's you, there's, some, there's a happy medium between Inglewood and be. Mansion on the Beach. Yeah. Absolutely, there is. And I think yeah. in LA, like I live in LA, and you can find it's expensive for sure. But for a few yeah. thousand dollars, you could find a decent apartment in a safe right. neighborhood. Yeah. So she says, you know. I supported myself at 17 years old and had a job as a waitress and I paid rent. I've never asked my parents for money ever. I've always been on my own. And um, she goes, you know, he mentioned that I could ask my parents for money, but I've never done that. Like, I'm not going to start now. And as they're walking, she looks at his phone and goes, hey, what's that? He goes, I don't know. It's just something that popped up. It's just a page I follow. And she goes, that's weird that you follow that page. Really? That's wild. That's wild. And so they ask him about what was it? And he goes, listen, it's just a page I follow. And basically it was a lady in a Dora the Explorer outfit, but you know, like with booty shorts. What, <laughs> like, what the hell? What this is like cosplay. Is it like for cosplay children? Corn, yeah. corn? Yeah, exactly. For the Disney Channel? Like I, what? It was mm. 
And he says, you know, Sophie could be jealous. So, yes, she got jealous because she saw this picture. I just followed the page. I don't follow any of the people. So he tells her that. He follows the page and he has a notification set. Yes. Because it popped up. up, He has a notification set. So he really likes that page. So he's telling her this. Like, I just followed this page with these ladies on it. Like, not like the individual girls that I'm talking to or anything. Just the page. And he goes, and, because he's a gaslighter, didn't you find me on a page like that? God, he Um, really is a gaslighter. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, I was single. So it Mm -hmm. was okay. I was single, so it was okay if I was looking at those pages. And he goes, all right, I'm it's sorry, not babe. not the same thing at all. No. He goes, I only have eyes for you. I only have eyes for you. But what he didn't do was go, let me just unfollow that page. That is so stupid that I follow that, you right. know. Next, it's going to be like a sexy Hannah Montana. Like, it's just gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gross. No, it might be only cartoon characters. Even worse. It's like Even Rainbow worse. Bright porn. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm aging myself. I don't think Rainbow Bright's even around anymore. I think it's Strawberry Shortcake. So yeah. <laughs> she says um, she's starting to feel like um, overwhelmed and kind of worried. Like, should she have forgiven him that time that he was doing that online cheating? So the next day they walk the dog. And this is when maybe I agree with you that maybe she's just hashtag blessed with a nice ass. Yeah. And I think of some of the pictures that we saw with her, like her online modeling. And she was doing a lot of that like squat, but stick your butt way out. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, that made it look bigger. I don't know. I'm going to try that later. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nothing would make my butt look <laughs> like that. It would be sad. Then I'd be like, somebody help me get off the floor. Um, so. Well, she, no, I can't. I don't know if I can say this. Is this offensive? Oh. No, I, I'm not going to say it. I, this is the same thing I was going to say before. Okay, I'm not going to say it. Okay, don't say it. Yeah. Now I want to know. So um, anyway, so they're walking the dog, and she goes, yeah, could I – he goes, like, you can when I'm not around, like, you could – when I go to my job, which, LOL, he doesn't have, she goes, um, she goes, like, can I walk the dog by myself? And she goes, I don't think – no, never mind. I don't think I want to walk the dog by myself. And I'll be happy when we live in, a, like, a nicer part of town so I could, like, go out and walk the dog. I mean, she's got to feel trapped. Yeah. And, you know, if she yeah. can't even go out and walk the dog. Yeah. And um, in the talking head, she's like, you know, in 2020, when everything was happening with COVID and we hadn't seen each other in a long time, Rob did cheat. And I've only had one other long-term boyfriend. And he also cheated on me like 12 times. So, yeah, I do worry every day that Rob, will do, it, Rob will do it again, right? This is exactly what happened to Sheila. And that's why she was so jealous of the interpreter. Her ex-boyfriend yeah. cheated on her, I think, 12 times. 12 is the magic number. Something like that. 18 times. It was a lot of times. Are we thinking of Sheila or are you thinking of Mary and Brandan? Oh, I'm thinking Mary- of Mary. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of Mary. Mary and Brandan, she had a boyfriend that cheated on her a lot. Yeah, that's right. A lot. Yeah. But now that he's there, she's like, I don't care. Cheat on me. You can leave. I- She's also like, you can leave. I'm pregnant. You yeah. know, I, so this, much for being a virgin, I, whatever. I yeah. hate you. Bye. <laughs> so, um, so she tries to talk to him about this, about this, you know, Whilst what happened. His dog is limping and he is checking the dog's paws to yeah. make sure the dog's paws are not infected or he stepped on a shard of glass. He, yeah. She's like, let me talk to you about the cheating thing. Let's check well, on the dog first. We have been wiping our dog's paws with this thing called Malaket, M-A-L-A-K-E-T, Malaket, mm-hmm. when they come in, if they've been in the grass a lot, and we wipe the bottom and the top of the paws, and it has really like stopped their gnawing on their paws. Oh, good to know. That's a good tip. A lot of dogs have that problem. Yeah. Also, and if the, they smell like- um, Fritos. Fritos. That means there might be like a yeasty thing going on. Yeah. And so the vet recommended it um, because they were getting these allergy shots trying to figure out why they bite their paws so much. And we started yeah. wiping with those pads. I just got them from like Amazon or Chewy or whatever. And they have helped so much. So if you have a dog with Good tip. itchy, itchy, bitey paws. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. Like when you do something like that and you can like immediately see that it Can't works. Think. Yeah. You're just like, wow, thank the Lord. I did something right. So All right. So she's trying to talk to him about it while the dog is limping. And she goes, you know, I know that you don't like to talk about these things, but now is the time because we we only have these 90 days. Like Kimberly said, this is not what this time is for. And he goes, listen, 
You're not going to act like I cheated on you. Gaslighting again. You're not going to act like I cheated on you when all I did was respond to a video with some chats or some videos while laying in bed when it's just, just one day. Like, I mean, we hadn't seen each other in seven months. So I'm not, I'm not. And she goes, that was cheating. You were cheating. And he goes, you act like you've never done something like that. She goes, I haven't. I've never done anything like that. And he goes, it wasn't cheating. You're not going to act like I cheated. She goes, it was. He goes, and in two and a half years, that's all I've done is that one thing. And she goes, well, I haven't done anything. And he goes, oh, well, Gaslight, what about when you were on that dating app, but you were on the, on the dating side, not the friend side? And she goes, no, I was on the friend app because I travel a lot. And when I travel, I like to like meet people. And he goes, no, my buddy saw you on the dating side. She goes, you're not going to bring that up and try to turn it around on me because it's not true. I was on the friend side of it. So we need now to in Tyre to re whatever his name is the friend yeah we're gonna need we're gonna need some proof so are there from screenshots that. of what side she was on yeah we need to also know. thank you to the people who said that it was Jay of Jay and Ashley who was on Bumble but on the wrong side and yeah. said that it was the friend side and he said it was like a language thing and he just didn't understand that he wasn't mm. on the friend side that he was on the dating side. Um, wasn't he like from Jamaica? He spoke uh, perfect English. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> okay. Just don't so, question Mary Payne. Yeah, okay. Also, so, do we think this woman who sent these videos, he, so this woman sends him videos, mm -hmm. sends him videos, he responds. Within minutes, Sophie gets messages from this girl with screenshots. So this right. girl is a full-on catfish, like just trying to stir up trouble. Yeah. With, like, does she, maybe she knew Sophie from like a job and Sophie got a job she did, she wanted and like, she's trying to get back at Sophie for some reason, right? It's interesting. It almost feels like what, um, Jen and Rishi's, what, uh, Jen's friends did when they, yes. when Randy, who I'm supposed to be talking to this week, but I had to reschedule for after BravoCon because I'm too busy. What Randy did by sending Rishi pictures and trying to see what his response was, it seems like maybe like, was this a friend of Sophie's trying to see if mm -hmm. he would take the bait, mm -hmm. right? And then didn't That's want what, to admit to her that it was them, but did send her the photos. Yeah, or I just Sophie need could, like- Sophie could have set that up to see if he would take the bait. Oh yeah. It could have been Sophie's yeah. idea or just her friend's idea. Yeah. It could have been that friend that was at the bar that could met with Sophie. I just yeah. need a universal standard on like what cheating is. I wish we could all come to some agreement and everyone just knew because freaking Angela on Last Resort, Michael, the boys called Michael in Nigeria and said, we're at a strip club and showed him a video of the strippers and he hung up the phone and Angela is like, he cheated on me. He just cheated on me. <laughs> He literally got a call from Jovi. Jovi said, look where we are. She turned the phone around and there were strippers. Michael hung up the phone. And she, Angela's like, Michael just cheated on me. So we need a universe. So the, well, you're, I don't you're lowering the definition of cheating, Angela, and making it harder for people who really were cheated on to stand up for yourself when you're saying that that was cheating. Yeah, I don't think we need to look at Angela to be the bar of anything. No, absolutely no. not. No. So, uh, okay. So he tells us what happened. He says, listen, it was during COVID. I was bored. Somebody hit me up on my phone. And so that person sent pictures and I responded back and forth. I don't know. Was it two days? Was it 10 minutes? I'm not sure. And that person told Sophie. But, you know, that's in the past. It's in the past. And we have worked through it. And now she keeps bringing it up. So the talking head, she goes, every time I bring it up, he gets very defensive and he looks very nervous and he just can't talk about it. So like, how are we going to like get through these 90 days if you can't even talk to me about it? Good he question. He has seething anger under the surface. Riley, I never saw that. But Rob gets so angry so fast. Uh, He is very defensive and he is very like, well... <laughs> You're just crazy if you think you should live in a place that has a toilet. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's just very defensive. Very defensive. And if defensive. he's like that in front of cameras, like, what is he like with no cameras? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's violent or anything, but he's 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 not portraying himself very well. And he no, keeps bragging about that airport romance 
that was not romantic. And he keeps saying, I nailed it. I created a dream. It was like Prince Harry proposing to Meghan Markle. That's how romantic it was at the LAX um, terminal. I think I can't wait for the tell all for all these other people to just rip him apart and be like, well, what, dude. The dance. I want <laughs> yeah. them to show the dance. Like, dude, did what what did we miss? Because yeah. what we saw on TV was pretty bad. Um, all right, let's move on to Manuel and Ashley. And Rico Suave. Sorry, and Rico Suave. Sorry. They are in a thruple. That Rico is <laughs> Yes, the they are. Yes, they are. Um, so Rico is on the bed. Everything's happy, and um, Manuel is sleeping. Apparently, they made up last night after the dumbest fight we've ever seen on 90 Day Fiance, which is, I'm a witch. No, you're not a witch. I am a witch. No, you're not a witch. I'm telling you, I'm a witch. I don't believe you're a witch. So they made up, Mm -hmm. and they had sex. They banged it out, as she says, which is what they do. That is their love language. It's okay. Makeup sex. So, um, and also she says his freak number is off the charts. And I was like, great. Thanks for sharing. It can't be any higher than Gino and Jasmine's. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) also she's like an LGBTQIA flag outside. And I was like, that's amazing. Is she an ally or is she LGBTQ of some sort? And then I was like, is this another issue they're going to have? Because I can only take couples to have like two storylines. Like Sophie needs an indoor bathroom and she has to tell him she's bi. Um, Right. Yeah. We've kind of forgotten that part. Yeah. And the Uh dog wants to sleep on the bed. Like, and he hasn't told his parents that he's completely that's a left new the country. Thing that's come yeah. In. yeah. And then, so I think they resolve the dog thing and now they can bring in the family issue. Like, I can only follow so many plot lines or else the tell all will be a disaster and she yeah, and Robinson right. won't be able to keep up. So, right. <laughs> I mean, if she, she is LB, LGBTQ, that's great. She shouldn't hide it. But I just can't handle any more hurdles. In these relationships. So <laughs> they go to the grocery store to get food. Um, he's super confused by the baby carrots, which I understand. They are a man-made abomination. And I like them. But that it does show how lazy we are. Yeah. I did like how he was like, there are carrots here, but there yeah. are also carrots there. Yeah. And when she explains it, she goes, now that I'm explaining it, it is pretty stupid. <laughs> it is. Also, only buy organic baby carrots because real, like the non-organic, it's like all chemicals, I think. I know. I know. Isn't that you, true? It, it's like they dip them in chemicals or something. I think anything that ha- doesn't have like a thick layer, like a banana. Yeah. Anything. Go organic. Go organic because yeah. even like an apple or anything, it's, since the skin mm-hmm. is very thin. But anything yeah. that doesn't have like a thick skin, you should go organic because of the yeah. pesticides. This is privilege, by the way, we're speaking. I understand. understand. So uh, he, she shows him the section of all the fake meats. That's my section. And uh, I love my morning star section. And he's very confused. And I think she should have not told him. She should have cooked him some of those sausages and not told him and seen some of them. In my opinion, you can't tell the difference. I know a lot of meat eaters are laughing at me right now and saying yes. But you know what, though? If you don't want to eat meat, why do you want to taste? Why do you want to eat something that tastes like meat? Because it still tastes good. And most people that are vegetarians are not vegetarians because they didn't like the taste of meat. They're doing it for Uh health reasons or environmental reasons or animal reasons. Uh I don't love the ones that taste like meat too much. Like I don't like Impossible Burgers. It tastes Mm -hmm. too much like meat and it grosses me out. Um, But some people really like that. And I think if it helps them be a vegetarian and less animals get hurt, then why not? Do you like a Morningstar black bean burger? Yeah. I do too. I love their corn dogs. I like their chicken nuggets. Um, I like their bacon. It, none yeah, of it my, tastes that much like meat, but those things she was showing him, the like the sausages, some of those yeah. like really look like sausages. Um, if it looks too much like meat, I for me, it's not for me. It kind of does gross me out. But a lot of people that are like newer vegetarians that miss meat, it's good for them. Anna used to love those Morningstar chicken nuggets. Love. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I feed them to all the time. I'd be like, I'm out of chicken nuggets. You're getting vegetarian chicken nuggets. I, they, I didn't tell them. They didn't know. Yeah. 
So he, and then he's like, what is going on in America? Milk is not milk and sausage is not sausage and nothing is real. And I was like, wait until he meets Nikki. And then I was like, that is too mean to say on the podcast, Kimberly. <laughs> and then I just said it anyway. And I love Nikki. Apologies, Nikki. So oh, you're funny. Manuel says, I'm I'm going to have to respect their culture and adapt, which is the honestly the most mature thing we've ever seen anyone say on this show. Um, I, he's growing on me. He's growing on me. Yeah, it was. He's not that bad. And also, can he call Kimberly and TJ and give Kimberly a talking to about oh. respecting and adapting? <sighs> yeah. Well, listen, um, Kimberly and TJ, like she, she, she chose that life, and then she doesn't like it because it wasn't up to her standards. Right. Yes. Um, and she lived there for a year. She's had plenty of time to learn about their culture. That's right. I mean, I she just gets frustrated very easily. It's always those Zen people. <laughs> those like. I I have my you have those crystals and incense because you need them. <laughs> but you, they're not working. <laughs> they're not working though. Yeah, yeah. So they're having dinner with her mom and he looks a little nervous. Um and she asks him again, like, before we go to this dinner with my mom, have you called your mom yet? Told her you're in America, and he says no. She still doesn't know that he's in America. And um also, I did want to point out her Daisy, giant Daisy earrings and Daisy Joker. Like the 90s are so back. Full. This mm. brought me back to I used to wear these jean shorts with the flowered ruffles on the bottom with a yeah. top that matched the flowered ruffles. Sure. From the mm. mall. And I can't think what that store was called. Wet Seal, maybe? <laughs> um, I think it was the Limited Wet Seal. Two? I don't know. It might have been a little bit too. Um, but that was like my like uniform, basically. Uh, so she says, um, you really, I really don't want, I really want your mom to know. And he says, well, I don't want my mom to worry. And she says, but it makes me feel bad that she doesn't know. And yeah. I want her to know that you're here and I'm taking care of you and you're fine. And um, she says, this worries me basically because it's an overarching theme with him that he's very secretive and he's secretive with me and he's secretive with his family. Also, he has two children at home. He has two Teenage. teens Teenagers. at home yeah. and she's like, I don't even know if they know about me and I'm yeah. going to be their stepmom. And then she says, I mean, it's none of my business. And I was like, it's kind of your business. Yeah. And, I mean- you can't like force him to tell them, but he's he's thirty five. He's thirty five, and he's got teenagers. So he could have had kids when he was like nineteen, twenty, twenty, yeah. twenty one, or whatever. Yeah, wild. But they deserve to know, and they need to know where their dad is. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, I, but I love that she's like, it's not my business. <laughs> what? Mm. Kind of is, yeah. It kind of is. Um, I mean, if she was saying, like, you have to tell them right now, I would probably be like, that you can't overstep. But, like, he needs to tell them before yeah. they get married. So she bought him some ni nice shirts to wear for the mom because the mom is a little tough. And um, she wants their outfits to match. She says, no hat at dinner. And he says, okay, boss. And that's where I was like, okay. He seems to be, like, okay with her bossing him around a little bit. Maybe he's not Yeah, so like bad. I said. Also, you know, they had they banged it out, so he's in a good mood. He's in a great yeah. mood, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Mama Ashley comes in, and they're hugging each other, and she's even a little teary because they've been together on and off for years now, and so she's finally meeting him, and she's excited. And the mom pulls out the Google Translate, and it's literally, it's so nice to meet you. Send. Yeah. Now we plan the wedding and babies. <laughs> that is literally the Send. same thing. Yeah, Send. Yes. Yeah. That is the second thing she says. And he says, what? Uh, that's it's so soon for that. And she's like, I'm old. I need babies. She's and like, look at Ashley. She's 32. Her eggs are rotting as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley says, yeah, my mom's baby hungry. She's a teacher. She's that lady that will steal babies. I don't mean like actually steal babies, <laughs> but like at a party, she will take someone's baby and be like, can I hold your baby? And then not want to give it back at the end of the night. So that's me. Yeah. I'm that lady. I'm that lady. <laughs> she's Mary Payne. And yeah. uh, so then they're all seeming to get along well because the next shot we see is it's dark out. So time has passed and they've been chatting. 
But then they find out that he didn't tell his family the truth about America and they find that super sus. And the mom is being very nice. And she's like, you know, in my marriage, what has kept us going for so long is communication. And he's like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to fight about it. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't, she wasn't being that pushy or mean, but he got a little defensive. Um, yeah. So and I think we see, I think we see why later. Cause I think he yeah. really, Yeah. So the next day they're walking Rico, Rico Suave, who we learn is not fixed. And I was silently judging, except not so silently. Why isn't I know. he fixed? I, why isn't he fixed? Um, yeah. That's not responsible. Are you breeding no. him? Are you a licensed breeder? I don't think so. No. So she says, Rico now respects Manuel as the man of the house and has made himself a little bed under the bed. And I was sad that Rico Suave is now not on the bed. But- she says, I don't really miss him that much because he's kind of a you know what block. And he's a cock blocker. Yeah. And yeah. that's so funny because she fought so hard for Rico Suave. And now she's like, Yeah, it's fine under the bed. I know. I was like, and he made himself a little bed. That's sad. It's really sad. Do you it's think like he's Harry walking around the house? under the stairs? Yeah. But he's like, walking around the house gathering pillows in his yes. mouth and plopping him down and trying to make himself a bed. Yeah. But dogs do like small confined spaces. It makes yeah. them feel safe. So maybe he's fine. I don't know. Rico, you can come to my house if you want to. So she says, I am a little worried because Rico, I think, thinks that he's my boyfriend and um, <laughs> he's my son. And so this is all, we're going to have to work this out. Everyone's going to, it's like, it's like seek, seeking sister, husband, brother, husband. We're going to have to like find a healthy balance here. And uh, everyone's going to have to That was it. funny. Because yeah. we know he's not fixed. And then she's like, he thinks he's my boyfriend. I'm like, what's happening? What's happening at this relationship? What's going on over there? Yeah. So um, Manuel at least cooks her breakfast, which I thought was nicer than half the dudes on this show. Good for him. For sure. And um, she says, I really want you to call your mom. And he finally agrees. So they video chat with the mom. And she's like, <laughs> Ashley's like, hi, mother-in-law. And she's like, "How? where are you? How are you? Because she didn't know he was in America. So she's like, where did she fly to you? Or where yeah. Where are you? What's happening? And so Ashley's like, okay, peace out. I'm going to let you guys talk. <laughs> Bye. And he Yeah, says, why are they doing this in the yard? Because it's like, this is not going to get your best Wi-Fi signal in the yard. No, yeah. no it's not. And so she says, um, he's, well, he says to his mob, well, it happened so fast. It's just like no planning. Like all of a sudden I just, I literally like fell asleep and I woke up in America. Like I did not have time to say, it was like magic. I, it was like Harry Potter and you just spin and then you appear somewhere else. Like I don't know. Go down the fireplace and you're in another dimension. And you're in another, like he is full on lying about this. And the mom knows like, you don't just go to America on a whim. It's a year and a half process. And he waited (laughs) until the last day. So it was probably two years. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, I don't know. I just didn't have time to tell you. It just really life life comes at you fast. And if you blink, you're gonna miss it. And right. he's like pulling Ferris Bueller. And the mom is like, hmm. And she's giving him that mama eye. And he's like, I'm sorry, mom. Um, and she says, You should never leave your family behind. I love you and I miss you. And maybe one day we'll see each other again. And then the video cuts off. And then because one of their Wi-Fi's was not good. And he's he feels very badly that he didn't tell her. And he says he is basically the head of the household and the provider for his family. And yeah. uh and I was like, him? Um, but his, something about his haircut makes me think he's like immature. But it is his hair. I was trying I was really assessing him. And it is his hair because his face is good looking. Yeah. It's that Butt cut is the problem. It's the it's parted in the middle and then swoopy, yeah. and it makes him look. I, it's like Ryder Strong on Boy Meets World or something. Like it's just cute on like a young younger guy, but he's like thirty yeah. something. It makes me think he's kind of like a like he's lazy or like sleeps around, like you know, just like isn't that much isn't responsible with money. Like it's <laughs> <Because> <laughs> it's his hair. It just because his hair, I'm getting all of this. 
from him. Wow. But apparently okay. he has been, you know, supporting his whole family and his children. Yeah. So good yeah. for him. Um, might mean not good for him. It's the bare minimum that someone should do, but like <laughs> fine. And um, so he he's like, What am, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to support them now, but I felt like I had to live my own life and do this for me. Um but I think he's in construction. So once he yeah. gets all his paperwork, he should be able to find work. So, yeah, for sure. Like a lot. Yeah. Then send money home. So I'm still not hating him. I don't hate him either. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to hear her talk Spanish because she speaks she's Spanish. She's really good. I mean, really I'm good. sure she's not good. I'm sure like a real Spanish speaker is going, she's terrible. But to me, for someone who's like never lived in yeah. another country, like I don't think she like lived – anywhere else she visited a lot yeah. but for her yeah. to be like so it's not as immersed in the language but yeah. she's still like is really pretty fluent and they haven't talked about him trying to learn english which i think will be important yeah she's gonna need to get on board yeah. with that all right well we can end with jasmine and gino so whenever they are doing this jasmine and gino thing they play this like leave it to beaver music it's like do 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 do. It's like everything's happy in the neighborhood. Nee, 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 nee. Jasmine and Gino. It's like it's like a like a family sitcom, like wholesome yeah. and pure. Yeah. yeah. So I said these two are perfectly matched, and they're gross and weird because he comes and he's like, look, look, I I watched the coverlet. I told you, and she goes, let me smell it, Gino. Let me smell it. <laughs> and he goes, you like to smell things. You're like a dog. She's like, I like to smell you. <laughs> So she goes in the bathroom and she puts on this like naughty nurse's outfit. And when she walks out, he goes, wow, like those are, those are really big. Talking about her boobs. And he's he like, yeah. Like, I don't know if I can say this. He sounds Go like, ahead. like, I just don't really understand. Uh I just don't understand him. He sounds like all, like a gay guy, like hyping up his girlfriend his friend like oh, girl okay. you look fabulous look at those booby things those zongas <laughs> like yes i do th- i could see where you would think that because he was like look at that wow he's always he like wow. turned on. he's more just like impressed or like wants to like you go yeah. girl like, yeah, he's not he's not turned on he's just like wow look at those big fate tatas wow yeah, yeah. So she's in this nurse's outfit, and he's like, wow, you're so sexy and hot. I really like it. She's like, you do? So she goes, I have something for you. So she gives him these scrubs with the hat to change into, and he's like, oh, there's a hat? So excited. <laughs> and she goes, yes, because I'm hat the nurse. Hat is his love language. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was like, she got a hat to go with the costume. And he goes, uh, you're the doctor, but you're also going to have to be my boss. And he's like, okay, huh, Jasmine. <laughs> so um, she tells us, you know, she had the reconstruction in her hymen. So he would think, oh, my God, she's like virgin now, like in a perverted way. Like it's super sexy. But, you know. <laughs> It wasn't the outcome because the surgeon snatched my P word too much and it was too hard to get it in. And so we ended up arguing. So now I'm going to try again with the sexy costume. So he comes out in the uh, surgeon's outfit with the scrub hat and she shows him three levels of instruments. Now, these are not the same as the butt plugs. These are vagina stretchers. So she goes, here's the little one. We're going to do this one first. He goes, oh, am I just going to like poke it, poke it, poke it? He does like a poking motion with his hand. And she goes, yeah. He goes, and here's the second one. We'll do that one. And then we'll do the third one. And then we're going to use the biggest tool of all, Gino, your tool. He's like, oh, Jasmine. And my, my comment is, we don't need any of this. We do not need this. We don't need to know this information. This is TMI times a million. Times a million. Okay. So the next morning they're I've in bed. I've seen people talk about those dilators like on TV, but those are more like informational programs, you know? Like a medical procedure. Like people who are trans, like they get like a 
vagina construction, they might use uh-huh. them. Um, or if you have like a condition or something, I think I saw it on like a true life a long time ago mm-hmm. Yeah, on yeah. MTV, like, you know, but like this with the cameraman there and they're like, it's so, it's so strange. I know but that's someone, what they want to be that yeah. couple. I know someone who had um, a, a cancer in that area mm. and uh, had to get like stretching in the vaginal area. Yeah. Um, and after a time, this person was like, you know what? It's not worth it. I don't care. Oh, wow. I don't I ever need up. to have sex. I don't ever need to have yeah. sex again. I'm, go- I'm good. Sex is I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Um, I don't have cancer and I'm still alive. That's really all that matters. So, yeah. um, so the next morning they're in bed and she says, um, baby, last night was amazing. And she tells us he played with all the toys with me and then he used his main tool and good news. I'm not a virgin anymore. Good news. So then she tells him, baby, I can have sex with you three times a day. And the more sex I have, the nicer I will be to you. And in the talking head, he goes, yeah, I'm glad everything worked out. We got our intimacy back and I feel like we're back on track. And I think everything's going to be fine as long as we don't argue too much. So it's a, it's a catch 22 because she wants more sex to be nicer and not argue, but he needs to not argue to be able to perform and have more sex. Yeah. Their love, their length, their (sighs) drives are not the same. No. And if she just force feeds him blue pills, he's going to have a heart attack. So. (laughs) I know, I know. She well, he liked the costumes. He did. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's, he's not going to be able to do that three times a day. No, the 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 costume store will run out of costumes. I mean, she's yeah. she's used the costumes before, remember? And he liked it when she had the like the fuzzy handcuffs and the well, yeah. dominatrix mm-hmm. outfit and all that. Mm-hmm. So they go down to the kitchen, and she looks at the bread, and she goes, "Baby, do you see this bread has honey?" And he goes. Yeah, honey, that's like natural. And she goes, baby, where does honey come from? And he goes, bees. And she goes, which are? And he goes, insects. And she goes, which are? Animals. Animals. So honey comes from the animals. And we can't have that. I take my veganism very seriously. So he's like, okay, all right, we can get some different bread. Then she tells him everything in the house is broken and she wants a new stove because it took her forever to make her food. And in his talking head, he's like, she wants an all new bed. She wants a new stove. She wants new appliances. Like we can't do all this at once, especially with the wedding coming up. We'll have so many expenses. And of course, you know, I've got this other news to share with her. So then I looked up about the honey and the veganism because I was like, that can't be right. Yeah. No, a lot of vegans don't. Yeah. It depends on how strict you are, but yeah. It looks like if you're super strict, it falls into the category of milk and eggs. But to me, milk and eggs, like milk and eggs come actually out of the animal. But honey is just something that a bee is making just to be happy. Right. Have but honey? If, like they are, it's more like the trade of making the honey. Like are the bees being overworked or abused or to get the honey? Like it's still from an animal. You're still using an animal for it so like truffles are from the ground but if they were like actually found by pigs they probably wouldn't because they'd be like i don't want an animal working for i can get my food i don't know if that's the same thing but anyways um a lot of wow. do that, but i don't blame him for not knowing that uh, me either then he didn't know that eggs were not vegan and that i felt was kind of dumb that he didn't know that but but i think some vegetarians of, do eat eggs but not not pure vegans would never eat eggs yeah yes well i'm a vegetarian not a vegan so i'm a lacto ovo vegetarian and i eat eggs and dairy um not a lot but because i'm always trying yeah. to be more vegan but um she's a strict vegan yeah but i don't blame wow. him for not knowing that she could I don't have been either. nicer about it yeah because she was like Bees are what insects? Yes. Insects are what well, she animals? Teacher. No, they're not. No, they're she not. Was a teacher. She talks <laughs> yeah. to him like he's a child, like holding up flashcards. What is yeah. this? That's yeah. a bee. Good job, Gino. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> so then he tells her, "Listen, I just wanted to talk to you, Jasmine, because you know you are my priority, and I want to spend all my time with you." 
And so because of that, I quit my job. And she goes, what? She says, that doesn't make any sense, Gino. And he goes, well, you need time, like a year to acclimate to America. And so I wanted to use all my free time to be with you. And she goes, if we're going to be married, you should have looped me in on this. You should have told me because one of the reasons I moved here is because you have a job. And she says, in her talking head, she says, by him doing this, he's jeopardizing the chance of me bringing my children over to the U.S. and my sister, daughter, Liz, because Mm -hmm. he won't be able to show support. And I got to say, I agree with her on this. Oh, yeah. He should have told her. That's a huge thing. Because unless they're showing that they make so much money from the show, which we're not talking about, Mm -hmm. then he can't show he's got income for her to be able to bring her children over. Yeah. And her sister, daughter, Liz. And so she wants nice things. Let's be real. She needs a new stove. Right. Yeah. I so mean, now she... Cr- I, lo- I know she cares about her family, but the amount that she has spent of his money on plastic surgery when that money could have yeah. gone to the family. Yeah. Well, Good. She a mom it. should be able to make herself feel better as much as she wants. Yeah. But it, not at the expense of her family. So she cries and she was like, now I'm stressed and now I'm scared. I can't believe like you've done this. So in the talking head, she goes, I just don't like how he didn't tell me about his decision because we're going to be together and he should have um, told me about his decision, um, even though I didn't tell him about my ass. Yeah. So they diaper up Coco and they leave the house. And she's like, oh, Coco, she's got a separation anxiety and anxiety. She's going to go pee pee. But I was glad she put a diaper on Coco. So at least while they leave Coco won't have an accident and she, so she always puts, does that Coco you watch the house for us she yeah does that in in yeah uh, Panama too she like Coco's like what my responsibility one of the bunkies wrote me and said that that's like a training tactic that you give the you tell the dog they have a job so they feel powerful but not if they speak English I don't know really maybe Coco only speaks Spanish I don't know I don't and know. the dog understands that yeah. And the dog gets it. So she's wearing one of his jackets and she smells it. She goes, oh, God, smells like dust. Let's go. So they're going to get a massage. And in the car, she tells Gino, oh, I do love the spa. You know, in Panama, I go three times a week. And he's like, okay. That's a lot. It's a lot. How much money is she spending? A lot. A lot. How stressed is she she that she needs to go three times a week? I mean, maybe she means... Manny, oh, Petty, hair. Her family better live in like a mansion if she's out there going three times a week to the spot. Well, they don't. But they don't. So she says, um, listen, I thought she would be happy that we could spend more time together, but she's not. Uh, she's just too worried about keeping up her luxury lifestyle, but we have to live on a budget. You know, we're in the real world. So they lay down for the massage and as they're, you know, he has his underwear on and so does she and she takes off her bra and they're laying down for the massage and she goes oh I saw something and he goes what did you see Jasmine (laughs) she goes I saw something I saw your sexy banana and he goes oh Jasmine you saw my banana last night (laughs) and bananas are now ruined for everyone we are all gonna have a lack of potassium now He's he's in his underwear. She did not see his banana. I don't want to think about it. I feel I feel like she might have because I feel like he wears those saggy tidy whities that are really well, old. They're, well, they were black. We saw them when they're he got black. up on the table. Yeah. So, but th- what were they? Those like they what kind of underwear? They weren't they? tight. They weren't tight. No. They were, yeah, they I think tight. he wears like the stretched out. They're like he's been wearing them for twenty years. Yeah. So the lady comes in. They're going to do the couple's massage. And the first thing the lady does is like touch his hat. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Hat says on. And in talking yet, he goes, yeah, I do have a hat for every occasion. I just like hats because they, they cover up my bald head. So I like hats, but I don't wear it in the shower or when I'm sleeping. Okay. We know sex. that's not true. Yeah. We've seen you in your sleeping hat. Yeah. So um, Jasmine goes, oh, this is so nice to have this massage. Maybe we can get one like once a week. And he goes, yeah, I, I don't know, Jasmine, maybe like once, uh, once a month. And she goes, listen, Gino, you spend all your money on the junk food and you should spend it, spend it on something more. They're like, this is good for your health. So the lady is rubbing her and touches her butt and Jasmine jumps and goes, oh, don't do that. That hurts. And he goes, oh, Jasmine, <laughs> why does your ass hurt? And she goes, no, he's, what does he ask her? 
What does he say? I thought he said, is why is your ass from hurt? from sitting on the plane? Yeah, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> he did, I can't. <laughs> There was this thread on nine, on a Reddit that I recently saw that was like, um, who are the smartest people on 90 Day? And like, some people said Gino and Jasmine, because like, he has a job and like, he's an engineer or yeah, something. Yeah. And like, she has like a bunch of degrees, I guess, and was a teacher, yes. you know? Yeah, but then he yeah. asked, is your butt sore from sitting on the plane? Like yesterday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she goes, I will bring the news to you now because now you're so relaxed. So, okay. But baby, don't be mad at me, baby. Okay, please. So you remember when I got so skinny and I lost muscle and fat in my ass. Baby, you remember that? And he goes, uh-huh. And she goes, you know, and I said at that time, I want to do the butt implants. And you said, no, that's dumb. But, well, guess what? So look. So I did it, baby. And she shows her butt. And she goes, even see there, I still have the the scarring or the bruise or whatever. And he goes, you got butt implants? What? And he's, she's like, he's very disappointed in me. And I never see him get mad. He doesn't normally get mm-hmm. mad, but my Gino is getting mad. And he goes, when did you do this, Jasmine? And she goes, so baby, remember when I said I wasn't feeling well and couldn't talk because I had COVID? Remember? Well, I was recovering from the butt implants. Now, that's just like a flat out bold lie. Oh yeah. So he he should be mad about that. She was flat out lying. Also, I don't and like using COVID as an excuse. No, like, that's going to come back to get people. you. That is karma. bad karma. So he it's says, like saying like you're somebody died. Like that's you're right. Don't do that. No. So he tries to guess the price. And he's like, "What was it? Like five k?" And she goes, "No more." And he goes like 8K. And she goes, more. And then she says it was $10,000. And he goes, you spent $10,000 on butt implants? And she goes, well, technically you spent it on the butt implants. And he goes, we have our wedding, we have the appliances and all the home renovations you want to do. Why didn't you tell me that? So then the massage ladies are like, "Mm." so he asked the massage ladies to give them a minute to leave. And he says, where did you get the money? Where did you get the money to do that? And she goes, well, I had some in savings. And also remember every month you're sending me money for the perfect wedding dress. So also I spend it on that. And he just looks at her and his talking head. He goes, I've given her a lot of money over the years, like rent and everything else. And for her kids. And she's always like, give, give, give. And she's always taking, you know, I'm always give, give, give. And she's always taking. And I'm worried now, like, is this how my whole life is going to be? Yes. The answer is yes. And he says, Jasmine, that's a lot of money. $10,000 is a lot of money. And she goes, well, I know because you had this good job and you were sending me the money, but now I know we got to deal with all the budget shit. (laughs) So he goes, it's very selfish to spend money on unnecessary surgery. And this is what I've always been worried about you. And then you did it. Yeah. And then in her talking kid, she goes, I was just sad now because I thought Gino would be so happy because I did all of this with the butt implants for him. I'm trying to look pretty for him. And uh, another no, thing, I can't, can't tell him that I needed $2,000 more and I got it from my ex, Dan. Okay. So that's a huge bombshell. Also, yeah. it's a lie that you did it for him. You told us that you did it for you. Yeah. And you did it for your Instagram career. Your- yeah whatever modeling she has a subscription service on the yeah. instagram yeah that's that's why you did it and um and you even told us you did it for you so don't pretend you did it for him and you got money from dane for, for the butt, and butt implants Dane give her money for butt implants i don't know because she's like what's the clock this is ticking is not a friendship like what that's not like what kind of friendship is this that's weird it's weird So next time on 90 Day Fiance, we see Nikki and Justin talking about their sex life, which seems to be pretty dismal. And then we see her telling him, you've got 48 hours to decide, like, if you want to be with me or not, and then I'm leaving. Yeah, good for her. He's Yeah. Now we have the new couple, Devin and Nick, and it seems like Nick is the one that's from Australia slash Korea, and they have to talk to his Korean parents, but maybe they're in Australia, and Devin is from Arkansas. So- that's all we know about them. She arrives mm-hmm. at the airport. Uh, 
Gino is still mad about the butt implant and the money, and he has to wonder, what else is she lying about? And then we see her like on the phone talking to her sister or something, being like, and I didn't tell him that Dan gave me the $2,000. She's And the whoever sister was like, you got to talk to him. Why? Why? She doesn't need to tell him any of that. If she, she said it on camera now. She has to. On camera. Yeah. If yeah. she hadn't just said it on camera, she, that's a secret you take with you to the grave. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So Ashley says Manuel's fan, family is calling her phone over and over and over, like nine missed calls, 20 missed calls, because his phone doesn't work in the United States yet. So they're constantly calling her. And she's beginning to wonder if his family is using her to get everybody over to the States? No, sure. what I think is happening is he may be... Okay, so maybe I'm misunderstanding. I thought it was a Jay and Ashley, not Jay and Ashley... Molly and Luis thing uh -huh, where he uh -huh. already had family here uh -huh. that were also trying to reach him. So it's yeah. like they're all trying to reach him and maybe he already has family here and she's the, they needed her to bring him over. And then like Luis left Molly because he yeah. already had a girl that he was talking to that he's he going to marry Molly yeah. to get over here. That's uh -huh. what I thought, but I'm not sure. Maybe. 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 I'm maybe not sure. We got to see what the area code is where the calls are coming from. Why? Is it in the States or is it in Ecuador? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Um, then if there's a friend of Sophie and Rob are sitting there having lunch or something. And the friend says like, well, what, what have you guys thought? Like once you get married, have you thought about having kids? And she goes, you know, I don't know. I might never want to have kids. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, I don't know. I can't really see myself having kids. And he basically is like, that's a deal breaker. Like, what am I going to do? Like, of course I want to have kids. So again, this is something they should have talked about beforehand. Yeah. But also I think in my opinion, she's too young to get married because at 23, you don't really know what you want with your life. Totally. And we have that on Southern Charm this kids. week. There's a guy, yeah, there's a guy on there who was like, yeah, I was married before, but the bottom line is I shouldn't have got married when I was 22. You don't know what yeah. you're doing at 22. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I'm sure it worked and that's for the some end. People, but yeah, it worked for my sister. She's still married, but um, yeah, I'm sure it works for some people. But mm. my husband's sister and husband got married when they were 19. They were still wow. in college. Like she went on to get her master's degree. Wow. And they didn't have kids till they were like 25, and they're still married. And she's 60. So I mean, they've been married like 40 years. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? And then my sister yeah. and her husband they started dating when she was in. 11th grade and he was in ninth grade. So she went to college. She was two years ahead of him. She went to college and then he came to college and she was finishing. And then, um, the, like, he graduated college in three years uh, so they could go ahead and get married. And they wow. got married and he was 21. She was 23. Wow. And they are still married. I just went and stayed with them in Mississippi. I think the percentage of l marriages that last when it's a young marriage is much less. So good yeah. for them. Yeah, I think it's crazy to think about my sister-in-law and her husband being married when she was 19. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, child bride, literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Worked out. But yeah. I think that uh, you got to you gotta know when you got to cut your losses. And I think that for Sophie to be like, I don't even know like what ring it goes on to be engaged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she really can't think about kids. She just got to think about an apartment with running water inside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and if she's allowed to walk the dog or not. I mean, yeah. like, wow. Bigger fish to fry there. Oh um, everybody, you know where to follow Kimberly and Katie over on at Date Dateline on Instagram. And uh, you can, of course, listen to their podcast, A Date with Dateline. You can also listen to their other podcast, A Date with the Bake and Jake. Yes, yeah, where thank you. Co covering Great British Baking Show, whatever yeah. it's called. You got never it. Never watched it. Never. I know it's hugely popular. I know Ben and Ronnie used to cover it too. Yeah, it's absolutely delightful. It's so, yeah. it's good, wholesome fun. Yeah. Just like the Plath family, just good, wholesome fun. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that show is so toxic for me. Like I get a little nauseous when I watch. I know. So I just well, we just, every time that. they do anything that like where they're really getting crazy, like they're really partying, it's always like good, wholesome fun. They're literally playing Scrabble yeah. and then like, and then like making like, sex jokes you know yeah. what I mean but they're but yeah. they're also like playing a board game and like we're so crazy we had two drinks oh my gosh time for <laughs> bed guys <laughs> I love it you know like even when they're being wild they're just yeah. like doing donuts in a parking lot they're yeah. like I can't believe that was such risky behavior um <laughs> 
Well, everybody, please uh, follow me as well on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. You guys have kind of been coming through on the Instagram. I appreciate it. I am up, to, and I think it has to do with your posting, Kimberly. I am up to like eighty one hundred. Oh my gosh, it's getting so close. Uh, uh, it's just not. It's just still nineteen hundred <laughs> away. <laughs> But, you know, I did have somebody really nicely send me a DM on Facebook and was like, I don't have Instagram, but every time you say that, I feel so bad. I feel like I should join <laughs> just to follow you. Yes, you should. That's what we're that's, asking you to do. Yes, that's what we're asking you to do. I did take my mother's like 82-year-old friend's phone. She was asking me something about the podcast and stuff. And she goes, well, I have Instagram. I go, give me the phone, lady. Yep, subscribe. Yep. It doesn't hurt. Said, you don't, yeah. it doesn't, it's not like, it. you're not going to, it's just do it. Yeah. I tell people to take everybody's phone and subscribe to our podcast on yeah. whatever podcast app they use. And she it's had not gonna, like, an, hurt your phone or anything. It just she had an Apple phone. She had an Apple phone, but she didn't have the purple icon oh, for podcast. Yeah. And I was like, "How's that possible? Because you can delete it, but you should still be able to search and find it, like in the trash or whatever." Gotcha. She didn't have it, so then I was like, "Does she have Spotify? Like, what does she have? She didn't have yeah. any." So I couldn't, I couldn't subscribe. She didn't have any way to do it. Oh my god. But I got that one Instagram follower. Don't worry. You did it. <laughs> I did it. One at a time. Just That's all it takes. Trolling people in the old folks home. Like, you got a phone? It. Yeah. That's a great uh, idea, actually. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. You start heading around your parents' retirement uh-huh. community. You, yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. All right, everybody. We will talk to you uh, next week with 90 Day Fiance, right? Right? We'll talk to you next week. Today, this is coming out on the 24th. Yes, next week will come out on the 31st. And then the next day I go to BravoCon. Woo-hoo. And then the next week, you and Katie will be doing a Pink Shade Takeover covering 90 Day. Yeah, I haven't asked her yet. And she hasn't watched it. Oh, well, we're season, just going to. So we'll just. Fun. Yeah, we'll just tell her. Yeah. It's only three episodes. She can catch up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com.